Ever since I was a kid, I've been so enamored with the idea of tour buses. But now I've had the privilege and opportunity to be on quite a few bus tours over my career. But the only thing is, is that I've never actually gotten enough footage to make a proper video of the behind the scenes of it. So just recently, I came back from a 19 date tour that was mostly on a tour bus. And so I wanted to show you guys the behind the scenes, the nitty gritty details, and all those things that nobody tells you about tour bus tours. So this story is gonna start off in Atlanta, Georgia, where we're having tour rehearsals before we ship out on the bus. All right, so we are at Salak Rock Pentecostal Church, and uh, we're getting ready to be rehearsing today. Right now, we're just kind of getting set up. You can probably see the stuff over here. This is a little less practice time that I'm used to for a tour this long, so we only have today. This is our only rehearsal for the entirety of the tour, and so I'm a little bit like, okay, I mean, it's fine. A lot of these songs I've played, probably most of these songs I've played on the actual recordings of them, so but today is just really kind of learning the routine, and so, that's what we're going to be doing. So let's jump into it. So my rig here is a little bit more than what I usually would do because I, most times I'm doing like fly dates and stuff like that where I, I don't usually have the luxury of carrying a lot of stuff or even backline dates. But for this one, since we have a trailer and everything, I brought a lot of stuff from home. Just like normal, I have my API transformer and all my cables are Merino Customs except for these two right here. And then I have a Boss OC3 Super Octave, Diodario Tuner Plus, and a mission, er mission Engineering 529i, which if you haven't heard one, one of these, it basically it could power all a bunch of different pedals from a, a rechargeable power source. And then uh, this is my Moog Sub 37, which is uh, gonna be doing all the synth bass work on. And I'm running this through Fatboy 2BI, which is not mine, it's the audio guy's front of house. Then I'm running my beautiful GK112, and this is the extension cab that goes with it. So I've got two 12s. And then this is Asia, normal, you know, my bass, bass mod, k 534 My juicy ears, my headphones, my in-ears. Uh, you gotta go check them out. They just got custom molds. These are not custom molds, these are universal, but they just made custom molds. So go check them out, juicy ears is what I use. So we're packing up from rehearsal. We're gonna, we didn't get through all the songs tonight, um, but we're gonna be sleeping on the bus and then the driver's gonna be jumping on at 2 a.m. He's just gonna drive us to our first stop. But anyways, so it was a good rehearsal. You have anything to say to everybody? Hey, Lolo. Hope you're watching YouTube. <laughs> That's his daughter. Uh, for, first day is usually always like this, but everything comes together. It usually takes a couple stops to get everything like Really gelled, so. Oh, look. You know my backpack? The Fly by Ultra by Mono. He's got one too. It's the best backpack in the game if you do anything musical. And if you want one, I'll have one linked in the description of this video, so go check it out. But anyways, we're about to jump on the bus. So the tour bus that we're on sleeps 14 people, which is the biggest bus I've ever been on. But we also have the artist's children and family, which is gonna be on the rear of the bus. And then the rest of the team is gonna be in the middle bunking areas. So what's really cool is that every single bunk has these really nice privacy curtains that you can button up and have complete privacy. And in the front area of the bus is the lounge, which on this bus, we have a little kitchenette along with it and a bathroom right there as well. Okay, I'm asking him, 
think I'll, like, I just see Why am I making this? Because I was like, wake up. So with a lot of tours like this, the first couple nights of tour when you're loading in, you're gonna be a little slow getting hooked up because you're still learning the whole routine. But once you learn the routine, it becomes like clockwork. So I'm having to build the Jesus tour <laughs> session. Um, they showed up, they weren't ready. And they didn't have anybody that understood Ableton. I was told their keyboard player was good at that stuff, but apparently he wasn't prepared. <laughs> He just cooked you. That's all right. But you know, it actually it actually went really well. This is Travis. This is what our our fourth tour together. Yeah. Out of all of them, this is like the best that we've sounded on the first night with all new material. So it's only going to get better from here. That's what we were talking about. The the gel. You know, as we do more uh, stops, it'll it'll get better and better. Yup. First night. Good first night. All right, so we are on the second day of the tour. Really, not second day, but the second night of the tour. We had an off day yesterday. But um, we are here in Memphis, Tennessee at a church called Grace Life. And uh, yeah, the uh, a lot of people uh, we're familiar with, we're friends with here. And uh, so it's it's been really an easy, super easy process. The audio guy here is like really friends with everybody. So it just makes, <laughs> you can hear people catching up. It's literally been it's just such an easy process today because of so many people just being so helpful. So we're actually about to do four different concerts back to back. It's kind of weird the way the startups because it was like a concert and then it was like a break. And now we're about to go through, you know, four back-to-back -back concerts. And this is where we're gonna start getting the familiarity with the music, with the setup and everything. So let's do it. Julian, you got anything to say? All right, actually, no, I do have something to say. You wanna do this with people that you like because you do less of this and more of this. So doing it with people that you enjoy being with is very important. And I'm happy that we have a squad that is like fun to hang out with. <laughs> it's like 100% of the, the time you're hanging and 0% time no, playing. Like you, like you. you know, your day starts with 24 hours. We do 26. We, we add two right, hours. And, <laughs> and, and my name is Julian Tavares. And subscribe, and subscribe, subscribe to the channel at Julian Torres at hotmail.aol. <laughs> So the way tour buses normally work when they leave is that we leave at probably 11 or midnight and drive through the night and wake up in the location that 
we were going to. So for the band and for the artist, we just go to sleep and wake up there, but we have a bus driver that drives through the night while we're sleeping. This is very nice. You can be sleep for seven to eight hours every single night, which is super, super nice. So we are in Dallas, Texas for night three or concert number three. And it's hot. Like when I say it's hot, this van does not have any AC. And Draylon is wearing a sweatsuit. But anyways, we're getting ready to head to the hotel to shower because we didn't get to get one last night. John, you good? Alright. So we're in the green room in Dallas, and uh, right now the opening group is uh, sound checking. Guys, y'all have anything? Anything to say? <laughs> Traylon, you got anything to say? Uh, it's John, be you great. got anything to say? <laughs> <laughs> nice shirt. Oh yeah. If y'all want the merch, check it out. This is the prototype. This is a prototype. Get your resting base. Base. Get your resting face base shirts. Is that the website? Travis Stikes this is Music. Also Travis Stikes Music.com. There's an easy way to kind of get out of here, you know, without without being rude. Let's do that. Like right when it's done, let's let's make a move. Um, the driver's telling me it's going to be like nine hours to get to the next destination. James has to preach tomorrow morning at 11, so that already puts us at being there at nine o'clock if everything goes right. So today we actually had the probably the one of the fastest setup times like I got all my stuff over here set up in like maybe like 20 30 minutes which was very fast for what I'm doing today is a really tight schedule um, we're really having to be on our P's and Q's today uh, we'll see how it goes I mean everything's going well so far but you never know what can happen So as far as how much people are making on tour, uh, I'll give you a range of what I've made doing bus tours, uh, especially if you're playing with an artist for 60 minutes to 90 minutes or more. It ranges for me from anywhere from $300 per show to $600 to $750 per show. I know that's a big range, but at the very minimum, $300 is probably like the smallest amount for doing any kind of bus tour. We actually made it. We made it. Didn't we make it, Shannon? We made it, baby. Where it, we at? 
<laughs> Shannon helped us with loadout, and that's the reason why. Yeah, we that's right. It. I'm a working man. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we made it in uh, just an amount of time for James to preach and uh, for us to load in. It was a really quick load in today. I think we really got the groove now. Everything's going good so far. I say so far because we don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> So a lot of times the bus can act as a consistent green room depending on if you know the green room's not big enough or any kind of factor. So what we do a lot of times is have meetings on the bus when we're at a particular date so we can get away from everybody and if we have like some kind of family meeting or if we had some details that we didn't want necessarily everybody to hear. In a week like this, uh, what I'm praying for is for God to just give us peace even, even when there perhaps isn't uh, the, the amount of people that we want there or perhaps when things are gonna go wrong. You know, I was telling uh, the guys today is like, this is where you have some of the most dedicated people, like the followers and fans, you know, yeah. follow, you know, like yeah. that are just like, it may not be the biggest numbers, but they're just, this means more to them yeah. than you probably even think, you know? So James, what are you going to tell the people who want to tour like this and want to keep their voice? Never do four days in a row. It's impossible to keep your voice four days in a row. Don't do it. Do not try this at home. So guys, today is John's birthday. He is, uh, this is week two of the tour. He's just he just turned 16, youngest guy on the tour. John, do you have anything uh, you want to say on your birthday? Uh, I hope I get another one. <laughs> <laughs> So we're here at the, uh, where are we at? Uh, New Life in St. Louis, getting St. right there, Louis. setting up. And uh, yeah, we've got a pretty fun night tonight. We got Julian back. I'm back and I got the juicy ears. He's got the I love you. Okay, he's got the juicy ears too. Aaron's all over here setting up. He's got his fish tank vibes going. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're getting ready to set up and then we're going to uh, get this concert going. So let's do it. So once we started to get a little bit more comfortable in the bus and a little bit more comfortable in our routine, then we started having a little bit more fun. Okay, so the song you sang tonight, like your fire fall, that you're Win. Yes. That's right, Oh, that was good. So there was one stop that was really, really going to be tight, which was the stop in Raleigh, North Carolina. And it honestly may have been our most difficult stop yet. On this particular night, we had to leave, be loaded in by 10 p.m. Because the issue is, is that we have to drive seven to eight hours to go to Atlanta, Georgia from Raleigh, North Carolina. And the reason why that is, is because we had to make our flights for the flight portion of the tour, which started that next day. So this had to be the craziest last day of any bus tour I've ever had. 
So the breaker just went off and uh, the air is off on the bus. This is the night before our last night on the bus. Ray is having to go pick up uh, Mark, the bus driver. And uh, man, this is like your second night on the bus, bro. I know. I guess it was me. It I was you. It. You cursed it. I broke it. The I'm lights sorry. are on, but the AC just went like a. Yeah, I believe it's an APU is the correct terminology. Oh, but I don't know. It ain't. She ain't humming no more. So it's two thirty in the morning. Two thirty-seven. Two forty. We have a very long day tomorrow, so uh, we'll see what happens with all this. So basically what happened, it was about at 2 a.m. or so, all the guys were sleeping on the bus that night, and the generator on the bus died. So we had to wake up our bus driver and bring him from the hotel to the bus to see what's going on with the generator. So he got the generator up and running, and they took him back to the hotel, and no lie, 30 minutes later, the generator stopped again. We had to go back and pick him up. And at this point, it's about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. He said that a belt blew and there was no auto parts stores open. So we kind of had to just deal with it until we got that part. And so we slept on the bus, but somewhere between 4 and 5 in the morning, it got so hot on the bus that I actually had a bit of a panic attack and I got a little bit on film. All right, so guys, it's 5.30 and I'm hyperventilating pretty bad this morning. The air, um, we thought the bus was fixed, but right when we laid our heads down, the generator went back off so we kind of had to just deal with it until like seven o'clock this morning, which is not even seven o'clock yet. But I'm hyperventilating because I woke up this morning to a blazing hot bus. And literally, I don't know what it was, but I just started freaking out this morning a little bit. I didn't wake anybody up, but I just started kind of having a little bit of a panic attack. <laughs> And so I kind of woke up and um, grabbed my shoes as quick as I can and came out here and I'm sitting down, sitting down on the ground trying to get my composure. But um, this is the first time this has ever happened for me. Yeah, this is, um, yeah. So what happened after then is that I literally just sat in the chair at the front of the bus, left the door open to the bus so there's some air generating. And I sat there until eight o'clock when our bus driver came back from the store to fix the generator. And then when he fixed the generator is when I actually got some sleep for about an hour or so. So, update. I guess the, the girls were coming in the bus uh, with Spirits of War versus Spirits of Peace. <laughs> we lost the war. Well, they were making jokes about the the bus and the AC and all that kind of stuff. Travis said that it's been the worst night that he's had on the bus this far on the whole tour. I agree. We got a tight day today. It's a very tight schedule because we've got to be packed up and the bus moving by 10 o'clock tonight. Honestly, I even think ending it at 9 and being done by 10 is a stretch. Yeah. You got something to say? But anyways, let's get going. So for every concert, we haven't been loading every single piece of equipment, but for some reason, our audio guy said, we are gonna need it for this one just because of the system. He was the one that really didn't wanna use our whole system, so we know if he was saying it, then we really needed to do it. So we actually, for the maybe second or third time this whole tour had to use the entire system that we brought with us. We're just like, oh my gosh, we're not gonna make this 10 p.m. curfew. So Draylon, you'll be getting up at what time? 
That's 70 by the set. If they go up on time, well, I should be up by 17. They said their song is six minutes and 15 seconds. They're starting at seven. Draylon could be up anywhere between like seven, five, seven, ten, right? Okay. And then we'll go straight from Draylon to me, no intermission. Um, cool. Generator. Oh, it looks like a. That's a coolant link. Uh, we're gonna have to call Mark. Yeah, you may have to hit. Oh no! Oh no! Oh my gosh. This is like literally everything. I got this, Bethany. Come on, guys. <laughs> that's a coolant leak. That's coolant. Yeah, that's cool. Hey, we got like probably four minutes. Glad somebody came well, to Well, guys, this is just what happens. This is just what happens. <laughs> Let's go! This is what happened. We know we found And we are here, boy. Let's go. We out of here. Good job. Good job. Somehow we made our 10 p.m. curfew and got everything loaded in before 10 o'clock. I even think we ended the concert around like 9:30 still, and we still got it loaded in in time. I don't know how but we did it. But then after we got on the bus, we had to hightail it to Atlanta so we can make our flights. We wind up getting there around, I think 5 a.m. and I think our flights left at like eight or so. And Atlanta is like one of the busiest airports in the world. We were a little bit nervous, but we got there and were able to make all of our flights to the next concert. Tonight, so y'all pray for us. I'm gonna put my camera up because I'm really, Really, really tired. Travis was built for this. No, I wasn't. But this is it for the bus tour. We're over. So at the end of the day, traveling on a bus is so much fun when it comes to going to new places, experiencing new things. But one thing that you never really think about, and the thing I never thought about until going on bus tours, is how many relationships that lasts a lifetime that you make when you're on these type of tours. Because honestly, when you're on a bus, you're pretty much living with all these other people and making memories that last a lifetime. So if you ever get the opportunity to go on a bus tour, I say yes, do it. But be warned, you may make some family along the way. So if you like my Behind the Grind series and like this whole vibe that I've been doing on here, feel free to let me know in the comments. Or if you have any experience on bus tours and things that you loved and hated about bus tours, feel free to also let me know in the comments. If you're interested in supporting this channel, there's two ways you can. You can go to my website and buy some of my merch that I'm wearing like right now, or you can go and check out my affiliate links in the description where this channel gets a commission anytime you buy through those links. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.